Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's begin lecture 27. Here we will continue our discussion on kinetics of corrosion. Now, in the last uh, lecture, we talked about uh, expressing uh, corrosion rate in the form of either MDD or GMD means gram per meter square per day, millimeter, milligram per decimeter square per day or there are one more section which is basically m mm per year or MPY. So, now MPY and MPY is nothing but milli inch per year. This is we talk about uniform corrosion and this one is nothing but uh, localized corrosion. Now, then we thought that we would get into uh, the electrochemical uh, mode of corrosion expressing corrosion rate in the form of uh, current because you would see in a while that current is nothing but the rate of charge transfer and for corrosion is nothing but the uh, anodic reactions or the formation of metal line from metal and then electron uh, will be released and that electron will be taken up by some cathodic reactions. Now, sometimes we have to we have to see that uh, these units are interchangeable. Uh, uh, Let us say uh, we know that what is the amount of metal loss and then calculate the corrosion rate in the form of uh, mass loss per area per unit time. And then after that we see the surface and then see that the surface does not change much. So, then we have to convert it into uh, the another unit which is nothing but the uh, depth attacked or the depth penetrated per unit time. So, that conversion is quite straightforward only thing is we have to divide it by the density. And in addition to that, uh, while we change the units, uh, there could be some conversion factor. So, like uh, one conversion factor which is very popular is MPY is considered as uh, 534 into del W by area by time by density or the rho, the rho is density of the metal, where del W is expressed in the form of in the form of uh, milligram A is inch square time is hour and rho is gram per centimeter cube. Now, uh, this is the convention people have used. So, uh, I think uh, from the first uh, when it was first uh, understood that time this particular expression existed. But now, uh, I would say that you do not bother about this expression, only I am showing it that how to con how, how why this conversion factor 534 comes in. Uh, I just would like to mention that otherwise you simply consider uh, the units after taking uh, mass loss area time and density whichever way you would like to consider, but it should yield milli inch per year. So, then you would get different conversion factor. 
but at least let us see ke how this 534 arrives. Now, when we talk about del w a t rho, let us say somebody express these are the uh, considerations that weight loss was taken in milligram, area was taken in inch square, time is in hour and rho is in gram per centimeter cube. Now, if that value is let us say 10 unit of this. Now, we have to consider in terms of m p y. So, if we consider this part milligram per area is in inch square, then we are taking time in hour, then we are taking in gram per centimeter cube. So, in milligram I am just doing the conversion in order to arrive to this particular MPY. So, I have to make it in the form of milli inch per unit area per unit per, per unit year or rather milli inch penetration in a year. So, inch should be converted into uh, centimeter square or I could say centimeter should be converted into uh, milli inch this is in square. So, I just simply uh, keep it in square first and then hour should be converted to year. So, this should be 24 into 365 year because 1 year equal to 24 into 365 hour. So, from that I can write 1 hour is nothing but 1 by 24 into 365 and then gram I can convert into milligram since this is a milligram. So, 1000 into milligram, 1000 milligram divided by inch centimeter I can convert it to inch. So, 1 centimeter equal to uh, rather 1 inch is equal to 2.54 centimeter. So, 1 centimeter is nothing but 1 by 2.54 cube inch cube. Now, then I can write it as so this one would get cancelled. So, this part would get cancelled and then this one would go to 24 into 365 divided by 1000 into 2.54 inch per year. This should be cube. cube and now in order to convert inch into milli inch I can multiply with 1000. So, this this would become milli inch. Now, if you calculate this then you would see that it is coming about 534 roughly it is coming about 530, it will come around 535 close to 535 something. So, you can roughly consider it as uh, 534. So, that is what if I consider 10 uh, of this particular uh, amount, then this would become into 10 into 534, this much milli inch. So, this would be equivalent to milli inch. So, this is coming about 5340. So, you understand that how this 534 comes up. It is basically converting these units, these units in the form of the units what we desire or what we want. Here it is MPY and if we consider all those parameters in the form of these units, then there should be a multiplication factor of 534 and this is coming because when we convert those units 
we have to uh, see all those conversion and then finally, we achieve 534 that is the multiplication factor. So, like that uh, that way you can convert any unit into any other unit. For example, uh, if we consider uh, let us say millimeter per year, I have to convert into mem p y or vice versa. So, then also it can be done like let us say I want to convert mem p y even to millimeter per year. So, m p y is nothing but milli inch per year. So, this is coming out to be this is uh, and then we have to make it in terms of millimeter. So, 1 inch equal to 2.54 centimeter is equal to nothing but 2544 millimeter. So, it this becomes 10 to the power minus 3 inch per year. So, this so, it was 10 to the power minus 3 into 25.4 divided by year. So, uh, 1 by 100 divided by 2.54 millimeter. So, this becomes millimeter now the top part here. So, equal to 1 by 39.37. So, 1 millimeter per year equal to 39.37 MPY. So, this is another conversion. So, you can see that uh, you can uh, convert one into unit to another with some conversion factor. So, that factor is decided by what is the unit you are considering. Now, let us get to the electrochemical uh, ways of expressing corrosion rate or we would now consider the current flow for the corrosion rate. Now, when we talk about current flow as the measure of the corrosion rate, we have to see that why this current flow should give us corrosion rate. Now, let us say the metal dissolution. So, metal is going to N plus plus N E and where N is basically the oxidation number, oxidation number. So, when we consider one atom of that particular metal is coming into the solution in the form of ion. So, then we are seeing that any number of electrons are released. Now, if we keep seeing this particular conversion from metal to metal ions, that means we are seeing that the loss of metal is continuing and then we are also seeing the number of electrons are also released, that number is also increasing. Now, the rate at which this metal ions are forming that would also be related to the rate at which electrons are getting released from that particular metal ion atom. So, that means rate of metal dissolved in the form of metal ions. So, that is also somewhat equivalent to the rate of electrons generated. So, and when we consider rate of electrons generated and we also know that rate of charge flow is nothing but current. So, that means, this is nothing but current. Of course, the current could be different, current could be anodic, current could be cathodic and here since we are considering anodic reactions, this current is nothing but the anodic current. So, 
it looks like that the current flow is guiding the rate of dissolution or if we can have the knowledge of that current which can be easily measured with an ampere ampit, ammit, ammeter. So, we can know what is the rate of corrosion. Now, when we talk about the rate of corrosion is related to the current or the flow of charge per unit time, then we have to take care of, we have to consider the Faraday's laws of electrochemistry or popularly the laws of electrochemistry. So, this is very important when we consider the rate of corrosion in the form of current flow. So, let us see ke what are those two uh, laws of electrochemistry, those are exact laws. Now, first it says the amount of chemical change which occurs at any at any electrode is strictly proportional to to the quantity of electricity passed through through the electrolyte. Now, when we talk about uh, um, electrolysis, let us say, if we send, let us say, uh, we are taking AgNO3, that is the solution, aqueous solution of AgNO3, and then if we send current, and if we send current, let us say, I, then we would see that this is positive electrode, this is negative electrode. Here, A g will deposit, since this reaction takes place. Now, if I send q amount of charge, so then we would see that the weight that is deposited in the cathode is proportional to q or simply write W is proportional to Q and the proportionality constant this Z is nothing but electrochemical equivalent. This is the chemi electrochemical equivalent of that particular metal. Here it is silver and this we can convert into Z i t since q is equal to nothing but d q d t is equal to i. So, q is equal to i t. Now, Z the definition of Z would be if i equal to 1 ampere and t is equal to 1 second then z is equal to w. Now, if we consider the second law of electrochemistry, it says that if the same amount or the same quantity of electricity is passed through different 
electrolyte. The different amount of chemical changes produced are all chemical equivalent. Now, let us see uh, what it says. Let us say we have uh, uh, two cells, one is the cell what we have shown there, this is two electrodes and then here A G N O 3 and the another electro another cell where we are supplying current and here it is NaCl aqua solution both are aqua solution and if we supply 1 Faraday of charge. Now, if we supply 1 Faraday of charge which is nothing but 96500 coulomb, then the amount of metal that will be deposited on this surface, here it will be A g plus plus E equal to A g. So, this will be deposited and that amount would be uh, this amount if we send 1 Faraday, if we weigh that it would become 107.88 gram, which is basically 1 Faraday charge. Now, on the cath anode, this is my anode, I will have this reaction. and then we will generate oxygen and that time the amount of oxygen anode for the supply of 1 Faraday of electricity is also uh, equal to eight gram. Now, if we see this A g and O 2, A g has got oxidation number 1. So, 1107.88 gram is nothing but 1 mole or 1 gram equivalent, because since a g the oxidation number which is n is 1 here, but if we consider oxygen on anode it is n is equal to 2 since we have to consider oxygen ion. So, the 1 Faraday is equal to 8 gram of oxygen which is nothing but 16 by 2, 16 is basically the molecular weight of oxygen is equal to 8 or this is nothing but 1 gram equivalent. Now, the chemical chemical product that will be formed here is so 1 gram of gram equivalent of oxygen. Now, similarly if we see uh, uh, NaCl here on the cathode you would get following reaction where uh, 
2 H 2 O it will react with it will accept two electrons and then forms H 2 plus 2 H minus and anode it will be equal to here C L minus will release one electron or two C L 2. So, this H 2 gas will generate on cathode and chlorine gas will generate on anode. Now, here also you will see that if we send one Faraday of charge on cathode, it is 1 gram of roughly 1 gram of H 2 and anode, it is around uh, 35 gram of chlorine. So, these are also their gram equivalent. So, now what we see that if we send the same electricity or same charge, we are getting similar amount of the equivalence, the chemical equivalence amount of products. That means, if we send 1 Faraday of electricity, we are getting 1 gram equivalent of that product. So, 1 gram equivalent of silver, 1 gram equivalent of oxygen, 1 gram equivalent of chlorine and H 2 in those two cases. So, that means, the second law is validated. So, now that means, E 1 and E 2 should be equal to Z 1, Z 2. So, E 1 and E 2 are the chemical equivalent for two substances and Z 1 and Z 2 are basically the electrochemical equivalent for those two substances and then second law says that they are equal, if the ratios are equal because if we send similar amount of charge. So, we will get same amount of chemical product which is chemical equivalent. So, let us stop here. So, we will continue our discussion on this and try to get some relation with the current and corrosion rate. Thank you.